What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released the RC or release candidate build of iOS 14.7 to both registered developers and to public beta testers. And this comes five days after the release of beta five, which brought a major bug fix to the software. So anyways, in addition to iOS 14.7 RC, we also got iPadOS 14.7 RC, the RC builds of watchOS 7.6, Mac OS Big Sur 11.5 and tvOS 14.7. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS and what is new, along with when to expect the final release of iOS 14.7 and also when to expect iOS 15 beta. Three. So anyways, let's start off with the size of this update. So you can see here, this RC build came in at 4.71 gigabytes on my iPhone 12. And that size is going to be large for all devices because we went from a beta to an RC build. It's always going to be large when you go from one to the other. So that is the size. If we go into the settings, check out the build number general about 14.7. You can see the build there is 18G68. And if we scroll down a little bit to the modem firmware, you can see that's at 1.80.02. So that is unchanged from beta five. So now what's new here in iOS 14.7, the RC build. And we do get release notes as we do with every RC build and it will tell us what's new. So it's nice to have these release notes because as you guys know, throughout the entire beta stages, we really got no indication from Apple, you know, what is new in this update. The release notes were very very sparse we really didn't see anything mentioned in there at all from betas one through five so thankfully we do have some release notes now and apple does tell us a few things that have changed so let's go and take a look at these and the first thing you'll notice is it says magsafe battery pack support for iphone 12. so apple did just release the new magsafe battery pack today for the iPhone 12 series. So this is going to allow you to charge your iPhone on the go as this MagSafe charger just kind of sticks to the back of the phone thanks to the magnets inside of the iPhone 12. So I did go ahead and order mine. It is $99 and it only comes in white for now. I do wish it came in multiple colors, but it just comes in white for now. And the interesting thing about this is that iOS 14.7 of course is required for using this battery pack. So we will have to see the final release of 14.7 by next week when these come out. So it's saying the 21st, my shipment is expected on the 21st. We also have an update to Apple Card Family. So you can see that 14.7 adds the option to combine credit limits and share one co-owned account with an existing Apple Card user. So I guess Apple Card Family is now official with 14.7. I personally would not be using this, but this is a really cool feature for those with kids or those with a spouse that you want to share your credit card with. And then of course, one of the biggest features in 14.7 is related to the HomePod and timers that are now added to the HomePod. So you no longer have to ask Siri to set a timer. You can go ahead and manually set it here within the home application and you get a nice sound for the timer for the HomePod. iOS 14.7 also adds air quality information in the weather app and maps for Canada, France, Italy, Netherlands, South Korea, and Spain. So if you go down here, you can see that the air quality, we've seen this for a while in the US, but now it is available in those other countries here inside of the weather application and also inside of maps in the bottom right hand corner. And then also inside of the podcast application, if you go to library and then to shows, you can see that it is now sectioned off by followed and all. So you can see the podcast episodes for shows that you're not following. So if you go to all right here, you will see that I'm not following oddball, but I do still have like an episode or a couple of episodes downloaded, but I'm just not following that show. You can see it shows up under all, but it does not show up under followed. So you can now section that off inside of the podcast application. And then also inside of Apple Music, if we go ahead and haptic press on one of our playlists, you can see that share playlist is now available, whereas that was missing for some users previously. And then a very big fix that Apple mentions in the release notes is it says this, Dolby Atmos and Apple Music lossless audio playback may unexpectedly stop. So yes, it seems like the 15 second bug that I've seen all over my comments and all over the Apple support forums could be fixed with 14.7. So you guys need to let me know because I've never had this issue, but if your music only played for like 15 seconds and then stopped or gave you an error, that should be fixed with 14.7, the RC build, and then of course with the final release. So that is a major fix that a lot of people will be very happy to see 
has been included in this update. And then Apple also says that the battery service message that may have disappeared after reboot on some iPhone 11 models is restored. So if you did get your iPhone 11's battery serviced, that could be a nice fix for you. And then the last thing Apple mentions on the release notes is Braille displays could show invalid information while composing mail messages. So quite a few changes in a 0.7 release. I really didn't expect this many changes in a 0.7 update, but you know, it was, you know, well over a month after 14.6 that we've been, you know, in beta stages of 14.7. So I did expect some changes, but Apple kind of kept us in the dark by not really mentioning much in the release notes on the developer portal. So anyways, that's what you can expect to see with 14.7. And of course there are other features and changes as well, which I will cover in my 14.7 what's new video. This is just kind of a recap of the things Apple mentioned in the release notes. I will go more in depth in my what's new video, which will be out next week. Now, I did also want to mention that iOS 14.7 does fix the Wi-Fi bug that I mentioned on Twitter last week. So the bug is basically when connecting to a network with the percent sign in it, it would actually cause your iPhone's Wi-Fi to just completely stop working. So that has been patched in 14.7. That was a pretty big issue and a lot of publications kind of posted articles on that. So Apple did fix that in 14.7 and we should see a fix in the next release of iOS 15 and the next beta release, I should say. Now, as far as other bugs go, I do still have the issue sometimes with the music cue where the first song does not show up as being able to be moved. So those three lines right there would just not show up. So that is still occurring in 14.7. It may be fixed in the RC build. I've not seen it yet but it was there in beta five. And as far as air playing to a home pod, that is still very buggy here in 14.7. iOS 15 is the only version that makes it a little bit better. All of iOS 14 has been pretty bad with handoff and just air playing to a home pod in general. It's just very slow, very laggy. And sometimes pulling up the queue is very slow as well moving songs around it's just very, very laggy. And unfortunately it's still the case in 14.7. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance feels really good here on the RC build of 14.7. I am going ahead and running a Geekbench test just to see if we score any higher than a beta five in previous versions. But overall, after using the software for a little bit, it does feel very smooth. It feels about the same as beta five for me, but that is good. I mean, I had no complaints about beta five and I would expect the RC to be just as good, if not better. So you can see on the Geekbench bench test we got very strong results here so we got a 1594 on the single core and a 4036 on the multi-core and you can see this is what it was on beta 5 so a 1583 up to a 1594 and a 3808 up to a 4036 so very impressive results here from the rc build as you would expect so i would definitely expect to see solid performance here from 14.7 and definitely better than the iOS 15 betas if you're considering downgrading. And as far as battery life goes, I would expect the same with battery life. I would expect battery life to be very solid here on 14.7, the RC build, and of course the final build. I would expect it to be better than 14.6 and 14.5, just because a lot of users did report issues on those versions with battery drain. And as for me personally, the battery life has been very solid here on 14.7. It's really a breath of fresh air after going through the iOS 15 betas. 14.7 is just so much better in terms of screen on and screen off time. All right, so now what is next for Apple? When should we see iOS 14.7? And also when should we see iOS 15 beta three? So as you guys know, the RC build is the same build as the final version and us beta testers just get it ahead of the general public. So Apple usually releases the final public version within a week after the RC build. And given that the MagSafe battery packs hit stores on the 20th, I would expect to see iOS 14.7 on either the 19th or the 20th. So next week, you know, exactly a week from now, or maybe even on Monday, the 19th. So my shipment comes in on the 21st, but I did see reports saying that they come on the 20th in stores. But regardless, I would expect to see iOS 14.7 early next week. Now, as far as iOS 15 goes, I would still expect to see iOS 15 beta three this week. So the 30th is when we saw the public beta get released. And that was also the re-release of developer beta two. So exactly two weeks from then would be tomorrow, the 14th. And Apple does usually stick to a two week beta cycle. So I would still expect to see iOS 15 beta three this week, most likely tomorrow on Wednesday, the 14th. But of course, a Thursday is also possible. 
And then as for beta testers, public beta testers, I would expect to see that a couple of days later or as long as a week later. Apple does sometimes you know, delay the release of public, but it will depend, although I would expect it to come just a day or two after. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 14.7, the RC build. Let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also make sure to check out the what's new video next week because I will include a little bit more detail and go a little bit more in depth in that video. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.